Hello everyone. So today let us uh, use automation rules to get the information about the development efforts, especially the pull request or maybe the name of the branch or maybe the uh, the commits that you are doing. So in this in this video, I just want to do something uh, very simple, but at the same time. Uh, it can be of uh, great use if you want to be transparent within your team if you want to uh, let everyone know that uh, this is what i have been working on and i want everyone to know about it so let me give you one simple example let us say you are working on let us say you are a developer and uh, your job is to of course develop things and uh, let us say fix bugs and if you are a developer then most likely you're doing something in the code, you're writing code or maybe you're fixing bugs. So let us say there is a new requirement and I'll probably, you know, create a new bug. Let us say you, you, you have a new bug, like ad hoc bug, or it is something urgent or critical. Urgent bug and you have to resolve it. So, you know, I'll just create a new bug for you to see and uh, we'll then of course start working on it. So this, this is my work. And of course, this is not really part of the sprint. So let us add it to the sprint. It is a bit, uh, it, it, it is not really a good practice to disturb your active sprint, but things happen. And when things break, you have to, you have to do things. So let us click on this uh, bug and uh, let us start working on it. Let us resolve it. And what I wanted to show you today is the is the capability of automation to also retrieve the information of your development efforts. Now, when you open any issue in Jira, and I'm assuming that you have the integration of uh, your Jira and your uh, Bitbucket, for example. So I do have this option here on the right, on the right hand side called development. And uh, if I'm a developer, I'll probably get rid of my face. And if I'm a developer, I want to, of course, you know, maybe create a new branch. So if you do this from here using this link, you will be able to create a branch with the name of the branch where you will have the issue key. And this is important because uh, using this issue key in the branch name, all the integration will work. So let us say you have a new branch that you want to create. So let us do that. And the moment you create a new branch, you will be taken to Bitbucket and you have the inf the option here. So maybe you want to, uh, so of course, you know, you have the repository, then uh, type is bug fix, and uh, it could be a feature or a hot fix, but let us say you're resolving a bug and you want to create a branch from master, it could be any branch. So let us, let us use the main branch and uh, we have the branch name with the issue key. And the moment you click on this create button, something magical will happen. I mean, not really a magical thing, but basically if you go back to your uh, Jira issue, you will, so right now it says create, create branch and we have to refresh the issue because we are on cloud. So if you refresh it, you will then see the information about the branch, the linked branch. And it is of course a very simple thing. I think we have seen this before. I have covered this as well. And uh, you know, if you click on this one branch, it will show you the branch name. And of course, you know, you can see other things that are relevant, like commits and pull requests and builds and you know, whatever relevant and other links. And uh, uh, the thing that I wanted to show you, show you today is how you can use automation rules to, to do something wonderful. Now using automation rules, you can, I mean, right now we have just created a branch. So let us say you have a new branch that you have just created. And uh, if you have also smart triggers configured, you can also change the progress of your issue. And maybe you can send a Slack message. But let us say you have done your work, you have started, you, you, you did some changes in the code, it's a quick fix, maybe someone, uh, maybe a junior developer did something that you think messed up everything. So you know the fix, you did the fix and uh, you then uh, raise uh, so you will of course you know commit your code and then you will raise uh, a PR a pull request so that uh, those 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 changes can be merged back to your stable release. 
So let us do that. And if you go back to your uh, repository, so this is of course my repository where I have some changes. And what I'll do probably, I'll probably take a look at the core, the, the source code. So view source. And I, I'm of course not doing this from the online editor because you can, but usually you would do it from your uh, local computer, for example, but using Bitbucket, you can actually change the change things online. So let us say you have this particular code. Of course, it's a readme file I'm trying to fool you, but I know you're smart. So I'm just doing it so that uh, you can understand the process and I have something that I can demo. So let us say you change the, you, you did some changes in the code. So these are my changes and I'm making these changes so that we can do a merge. So we can actually raise a PR so that it, it makes sense. So what we'll do now, we'll probably commit this. And the moment you commit it, hopefully things will, and of course, you know, you can also mention here issue key. And by the way, in your smart, in your commit messages, you, if you want, you can, you know, transi transition the issue. You can uh, log work if you want to. Um, and you can also create a pull request right now, but we'll do it later. So commit on this, I mean, click on the commit message, uh, or not the commit message, but click on the button. And now you have a new commit. If you go back to your issue, if you click on the branch, you will hopefully see the commit here, which is amazing, awesome. And, uh, and if you want to now do something like maybe you want to notify someone, maybe you want to send a Slack message, you can do a lot of wonderful things. But today I want to show you how you can retrieve the information about the pull request. Because pull request uh, is important because you, you may want to know some, you may want to notify someone, please review it. Of course, you know, Bitbucket will do that for you, but maybe you want to send a Slack message. So you can do that. So if you go to your uh, automation rule, what you can do, you can actually use this trigger called pull request. And maybe you want to simply, uh, I mean, of course, first of all, there is a trigger. Um, I mean, there, there is a way to, <laughs> to basically look for the triggers. And of course, the, trig the triggers will work based on that branch name where you have the issue key. So as long as you have the issue key somewhere related to the pull request, I think it should work. But of course, you now include the issue key in your names so that it is easier for the, uh, for the integration between Jira and Bitbucket integration so that uh, it can easily find that information. So what we want to do, we want to basically uh, I mean, by the way, there is a smart value that you can use like pull request dot URL or pull request dot title. Both will give you um, things that will make your life a lot easier. So what we'll do, we'll probably copy this and also add a comment and assume that, you know, I mean, when you when you add a comment, you can also uh, send this to someone using Slack. So you can send a Slack message. But what we want to do for this example, we want to simply add a comment and uh, comment on issue. I will add here title and uh, the URL because we want to test how it works. And uh, I want to save it. So we have this uh, trigger and what we'll do, we'll of course take a look at the audit log and we'll see so we, we, we just did a few changes and uh, we'll, cr we'll cr create a new branch and uh, we will see how it works so to create a new branch you can either go to jira click on this thing and then click on pull request and there is a button C create pull request but let us do it from because we are developers we are lazy people we don't really want to open jira so we we are within this uh, interface and uh, within 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 bitbucket and if you go to pull request and by the way we have to remember the branch name so branch name is i think uh, something something in 253 and i believe there is one branch oh no, no no there is one pull request already but we'll ignore it so let us create a new one i'm showing you the most obvious way to do it so uh now we have the branch name with uh not the branch but the but the pull request so fixing the bug and at the same time, you can add a reviewer, but no, we don't really want to add a reviewer right now because it's only me, but you can. And uh, let us click on the create pull request, uh, request. And the moment you do it, a 
pull request will be created for you and at the same time and of course you know you can see here on top an-253 it, it is now pointing to your jira issue so you have this you know both way like cross thing bi-directional in, um, integration right now of course uh, this this message is coming here because my bitbucket username is slightly different it is different so but you, if you have the same username it will work but the good thing is that you can always uh, go to your jira issue click on the branch and uh, if you click on the pull request you have this pull request which is uh, right now open and uh, if you also take a look at the automation rules and click on the refresh you have one uh, i mean there is of course this url and uh, the branch not branch why i'm saying branch but the pull request title and of course you know we we have to look at the jira issue itself because there should have been a comment because comment will take you let me just you know close this window so let us say we are now within jira and we are talking about someone who is not really bothered with um and, and of course you know i'm just showing you the example because this example is uh, from uh, pit bucket but the thing is that because we are talking about uh, how to retrieve the information of a pull request so this pull, pull request uh, and this url will take you directly to the actual pull request in bitbucket and imagine sending this message to someone in slack or any any tool to be honest i think key here is to retrieve the information using using the smart value so if you click on it you will be taken to your bitbucket where you can approve it reject it so these are the great things that you can do by simply using automation tools and uh, smart values on cloud and and of course this is all uh, related to the topic of migration i'm sure you are you are already doing a lot of wonderful things on server and after moving to cloud you want to preserve those things you want to uh, use jira cloud because you have to and uh, uh, and after moving to Jira Cloud, you still want to get the most out of your tools. So this is just one example between Jira and Jira, between Jira and Bitbucket. But uh, instead of adding a comment, you can do something else with it. And and that is all. That is all I wanted to talk about in this video. I hope you enjoyed watching this video, and you learned something new today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye bye.